welcome to this third tutorial in looking at extruding 3D text and shapes in After Effects. In the first two tutorials we looked at inbuilt effects where we could duplicate layers and I demonstrated the duplication method including demonstration of the simple expression so that we can be able to draw on shapes and we looked at text and made some fairly interesting results. And then we looked at the shatter approach which provided some very quick rendering results that were quite high quality if we took into account comp sizes and making them extra big. Um, there was a particular approach that I was going to be looking into and you can actually create 3D extruded text and shapes with particular. However, the workflow is quite complicated and the quality differences between the shatter approach and the duplication approach versus the particular approach, which means it's not something that I would naturally leap for as my first choice when it came to 3D extruded text because it's quite a complex workflow. So I'm not going to do the particular one unless there's some particular request that it has to happen. But what I do want to look at is another plugin which was designed for extruded 3D text and shapes and for building 3D items and that's called Zaxworks. Zaxworks is a plugin that you can buy and they produce two particular plugins. One's called Invigorator and the other one is called Pro Animator. Both of them help you to be able to create 3D text and objects and shapes and you can add materials and you can do all kinds of extreme things to them. The main difference is that Pro Animator has got an inbuilt animation engine which is very simple to use and really powerful and it's got lots of built-in presets which can make your workflow very fast. And after that I just want to have a quick mention about using a 3D program such as I happen to have 3DS Max but there's Cinema 4D, there's Maya, there's Lightwave, there's a whole series of other ones including the free one, Blender. So if you're looking at getting into 3D and you don't have any money, go find Blender. You might find that's ideal for you as quite a powerful and free full 3D application. Okay, so Zaxworks, how do we apply that? Same way as we do with all the others. We start off with a layer, so layer new solid or control or command Y. And once you've done that, I'm going to name that Zaxworks. Make sure it's comp size, Hit click OK. And I'm going to apply Saxworks Pro Animator, which happens to be the one I've got. So effects, right at the bottom, Saxworks, and you've got Pro Animator. Click to apply Pro Animator, and it comes up with an option. It says, what do you want to do? And these options are quite powerful. You can create 3D text straight off. You can open an Illustrator file, which we'll look at a bit later on for creating shapes. You can also create a 3D primitive or import 3D objects from other 3D programs, or start from scratch and do the whole thing in the Zaxworks user interface, which I'll show you a bit later on. But let's start off with creating some 3D text. Create 3D text. Out comes another dialog box. And in that dialog box, we can now type in what we want to type. I'm going to type in Zaxworks. And once you've created it, you can select it all and you can go down and choose whatever font you want to use. I'm going to stick with Myriad Pro and I'm going to go with Bold and click OK. Now that instantly creates 3D text. However, you can use comp cameras and you can use comp lights, but in my opinion, probably the best way to be able to animate this text is actually to do it in the Pro Animator user interface. So let's have a very quick look at that. So you click here where it says click to edit Pro Animator, and that opens the user interface. Now, here we have Zaxworks we can actually start to do all kinds of different things to it. I've actually done some tutorials on the Zaxworks website, zaxworks.com, and you can find out far more about how to actually create items, add materials, animate them, and add lights on the website. So I'm not going to go into all of that in great detail. I'm just going to very quickly run through some of them. They've got workspaces at the bottom, so you can go through all of these and choose which one you want to use. So I'm just going to click on materials. Over here it says object style swatches and I can change how this text looks simply by clicking and dragging different object style swatches. So I could take this one here, click, drag and drop and then you click render preview and you end up with how it's going to look. And if you're not happy with that one you can scroll down and find something different. Here's a wood one, click, drag, drop, render preview, you can see the end results. Really powerful. Let's stick with the wooden one for now. Click on the word animation and then I can click something up here, it says object animation and click try and it's going to add in some object animation for me. And if I don't like that one, I can click again and try all sorts of different ones. It's done animation for me. If I click OK now, which I'm going to do, it's going to bring that into After Effects. And now if I was to pull my current time indicator through, 
you'll find that the object animates on and then animates off again and you can see the quality of that that's simply superb just going to very quickly open up the user interface one more time if you want to actually see how the item looks over here it's got a 3d preview if you click on the camera icon then you've got these controls here for well this one's going to zoom in and zoom out so I can dolly in and dolly out so I dolly right in I can move it around with this one here and I can rotate it get a completely different look and move it across, zoom in, and you can render a preview and you can just see how it's going to look when it comes back into After Effects. It's going to look superb. So I can click OK on that one. And you can just see the quality of that. Now you can also go in and you can do all kinds of different things with different lights, you can change the materials around, you can add additional items, it's all very fast. However, when it comes to shapes, you have two options. Firstly, you go back to Pro Animator, and then you can go back to where it says Modeling, and you have a modeling window, and then you've got a pen, and you can actually physically click and drag, 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 click and drag click and drag and you can create all kinds of shapes that way and this as you can see has actually created a true 3D shape which can have materials added and it can be moved around or alternatively you've got shape options here so you can click on the shape options and you can say choose the star that we were looking at before you can click and drag and create a star and then you have some options so the number of sides, tip roundedness, valley roundedness and valley depth but you don't have all the options that you have in After Effects it does still create a true 3D object which you can change the depth of over here in the object controls so you're creating 3D objects that are really good if I go back to materials very briefly what we could do if we wanted is we could add some uh, an object style swatch to that gear that we've just created let's uh, click and drag that one on and drop it on and I can do a render preview and you can actually see how it would look so you can see just here, superb quality of it all. I'm actually just going to zoom my camera out so we can see a bit better. Those are our three items. So if I render a preview, wooden, metal, and we can put something on this object that I drew at the top. Let's uh, throw this, uh, this, this particular one here. It looks quite interesting. Just click and drag and drop. Render a preview. So you can create items by drawing them or by using shape tools, but if you want to actually get things like pucker and bloat, like twist and all the rest of it, then what you really need to do, I'm just going to click OK on this, shut it down, minimise that, I'm going to open up Illustrator. And when Illustrator opens, I obviously want to choose a new video and film document. Click on that. And then from the drop down, you want to click something that's the correct size for you. I'm working on PAL D1DV, so I can click on that. Click OK. And if you don't want to see the transparency grid, you've got View here. Click on View. And then you've got Hide Transparency Grid. You can actually see what it looks like. Now, I want to create a shape, but I want it to be filled with, let's say, nothing. However, I would like its stroke to be, let's say, um, let's say, a nice light blue and I want it to be quite thick so let's make it four pixels now the shape tools are here if you click and hold where the drop down arrow is you can get all the different shape tools in fact if you click here which says tear off you can actually make them floating as you can see I've already got a version over here which are floating shut that one down and then you've got all the different tools so I can choose the star tool and again I can click and drag hold the space bar to pull it into the middle let go and my items being created and then up here where I've got effects and if I actually go to distort and transform I've got all the ones that I had in After Effects so I've got pucker and bloat, tweak, twist, zigzag so I can pucker and bloat for instance and I can say pull the bloat out a bit and have a look and see what that's like you need to click the preview button here to have a little look at what it's like that looks quite interesting let's go the other way and see what that looks like that is also very interesting do I like either of them? Let's just do a little, I think. Just enough to create something of uh, some interest. Click OK, and if I want to, I can also then go Effect. 
distort and transform and I can choose twist and I can give an angle of twist and I'm going to give that 25 degrees again I can preview it to see if I'm happy with it oops minus one sorry 25 26 that looks okay just a shape to be able to show how it works click OK now now that I have created this shape it's actually important how I save it so I can use it in Zach's works and this is why I've done this when you go file save um, I'm going to save mine on my desktop and I'm going to just save it as shape one and I click OK and adds the .ai afterwards and then click save again and up will come the dialog box now this is the important thing if you save the file as is you will not be able to use it in Pro Animator what you need to remember is to uncheck this box here that says use compression uncheck use compression and click OK and you can now use that file in Pro Animator. Let me demonstrate. Go back, open up After Effects. I'm actually going to open up Pro Animator. And I'm going to go to Object, Open Illustrator File, which you could have got from the first item if you created something there. And I'm going to open up Shape 1, double click. And there's Shape 1. Now it looks a bit weird and wonderful because it's very small and we haven't got a lot of space on it so actually we need to go back to modeling and I'm just going to play around here I'm going to take the spike buster up so we don't have too many spikes and I'm going to make the depth a bit deeper so it looks a bit more obvious of what we've got and I'm going to then go to materials and I'm going to add a material to it um, I know let's add something like this green glass so just click and drag and drop and then we have if I click render preview we have a shape object that's been brought in and that's now glass like and it's cutting through all the other bits and pieces however you can move items if they're in the wrong place this tab was for moving the camera this tab here is for moving the object if you click on that and you start to move it, it says hang on a second you're gonna tweak are you sure you want to do that it's not often you do that but in this particular case where it's in the wrong place for us yes we do if I start to move it, it comes up with a warning, you are about to tweak something. Just click OK because I know I'm going to tweak it. And now these controls relate to this object. So I can zoom in and zoom out. And I can move it across. And I can rotate it and twist it. Just make it slightly more interesting to look at. I can render a preview again. And then if I want to, I can actually start to animate all of these items. Now they're all on the same track for animation at the moment so when I animate them they'll all be together but if I want them to animate separately and I need them on separate tracks all you do is literally tear them off. So this illustrator file all I need to do is tear it off, pull down, let go and I'll get a separate animation track for that. So if I were to go to animation I've got a separate track here and I can actually select that and I can do a different animation for it and all the rest will stick together. So that's how you can do some pretty weird and wonderful animations and how you can use Zaxworks. Now, when would you use Zaxworks and when would you use, say, a 3D application like 3DS Max? Now, the answer to that, just going to click OK and uh, go back to After Effects. There's our items in there looking very pretty and very nice. Now, the answer to that really comes down to two things. It comes down to your workflow and it comes down to ease of application. If you're used to using a 3D application like Maya, Lightwave, 3DS Max, etc., etc., then maybe that's the best workflow for you. You're using it all the time, you can create bits and pieces, you're making them the right comp size, and it's easy to make it. However, the downside is if you want to make a quick tweak or a quick change, you actually have to render some output from your 3D program and use it in After Effects, and you're going backwards and forwards with different renders. Whereas, if you're working with something like Zaxworks, it all happens in After Effects. You make some changes in the Zaxworks user interface and it's updated immediately in After Effects and you can have all your other elements in along with it and you can see your complete composition and fine tune it very quickly. However, 3D programs, as well as being part of your workflow, do have slightly more powerful controls for, say, lights. There's a limited amount of lights, still a powerful selection of lights in Zaxworks, but they're still limited in comparison to the almost infinite amount of lights that you can have in something like 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, etc. 
So lighting, also material options. You've got some very powerful material options when it comes to Zaxworks, but when you have your full true 3D program, the material options are even greater. So you really have to work out what you need. However, one of the big killers for me is something like 3DS Max costs a heck of a lot of money. And in comparison, something like Zaxworks, particularly if your main work is in motion graphics and in animations of this type, Zaxworks is a very low cost plugin in comparison to going for a full 3D program. And lastly, learning curves. If you haven't learned a 3D program, I can tell you from experience, it's a big learning curve. It's very steep, it takes a long time to get going. Whereas with something like Zaxworks, you can be up and running within half a day. You can follow the tutorials I've put on their website and you can actually create an animation within hours. So it's a lot quicker to be able to get going with Zaxworks. It produces really high quality results. You're not going to have any anti-aliasing problems. You can zoom right in and still maintain superb quality. But it's not quite as powerful as a true 3D program. But the downside of the true 3D program is cost and how quickly it is to set up and learn and use. Choice is yours. Anyway, those are the options I'm going to cover in these three tutorials. The duplication method, which can create some superb results if you play around and work with it. I think the shatter effect is very quick and very easy to use. And as you can see, it renders very quickly and gives some superb results. And we've got some animations of the textures there, which are interacting with the lights to produce some pretty good results, which might work very well for what you're looking to do. However, if you really do need to start to move into 3D to produce logos and all kinds of bits and pieces, Zaxworks is probably your best option. You can have a logo that's created in something like Illustrator and you can bring all those individual layers in as separate items that can animate individually to create superb results. As well as being able to create shakes and create interesting items both in Zaxworks and in Illustrator and bring them both in. Or alternatively, if you are somebody who's going to get seriously into 3D, you use 3D programs in your daily workflow, then probably the best and quickest option for you is to carry on working with what you know and integrate it into After Effects. I hope you've found these tutorials useful, that they've given you an idea of how you can extrude 3D text and shapes in After Effects, and that you'll be able to use these techniques and have fun. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.